Welcome back. So in the last video, we just were talking about generalized linear models and, and focused on um, uh, the logistic model, where the, which is a Poisson, sorry, which is a binomial link, a binomial model with a logit link as our first example of a GLM. Uh, but there's a range of other distributions that are available to us within the GLM framework. And one of the other ones that is, is common uh, is a Poisson model, so a Poisson regression model. So as we've talked about in our lesson on probability, you know, we talked about the normal distribution, which shows up a lot for continuous data. We talked about uh, the binomial distribution that shows up a lot for these coin flipping processes. Uh, the Poisson distribution was the other one we focused on is something that shows up a lot uh, when we have count data. So it describes cases where uh, our data can only take on integer values. Those integers can only be non-negative, um, but uh, there's not an upper bound. It's not this coin, you know, there was not a specific number of trials that we saw successes or failures in. It was more that, you know, you might say, you know, the density of owls in this habitat is, you know, 5.3 per square mile. I, I can't count 5.3 owls. I might count six, I might count five, I might count four, I might count 12. You know, what describes that count data in space or in time? of anything countable. Uh, so thing to note about the, the, the Poisson. So obviously we're going to switch to a Poisson distribution with this GLM, but we also need to think about what link makes sense. Uh, so the thing that's key to note about the Poisson was that it is non-negative. So we need a link function uh, that translates from uh, plus or minus infinity into a non-negative domain. Uh, the, Probably the most common option here, but the, by no means the only option, uh, is a log link. It's a pretty common choice because, uh, yeah, uh, you know, yeah, it translates negative values uh, into small numbers and, and positive values into bigger numbers. Uh, yeah. Cool. So here, let's dive in. So um, as in many of my other examples, I've simulated this data. So you know the code that we've run up here is not something you would run in practice. It's just the simulated data set. In practice, you'd have a data set. Uh, but here's an example of what some Poisson distributed data might look like. So you, the thing, the defining feature, uh, the x data is uh, continuous. Uh, the y data is only taking on discrete values, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Uh, and it clearly is zero bound. So regression is still not a great choice. <clears throat> uh, so here's what we get just for fitting uh, a linear model. Uh, ooh, our gold line for our, our uh, uh, logit model is there as well. So clearly you wouldn't use a logit link with this either because that is only bound between zero and one. Um, but our linear model you know, clearly it's, it, you know, when X is below one, it's predicting negative counts, which doesn't really make sense. Uh, and you can imagine that uh, at various points along X, this, the residuals are not going to be uh, nicely normally distributed because, you know, you're bound by zero on one side and we're close to, to zero. So if we dive into that a little bit, um, it's still better than chance. So it's still significant. We can still get an R squared um, and all that. But when we look at our fitted residuals, you know, we can see uh, that the relationship uh, was not straight, you know, that there is clearly kind of a violation of linearity. And it's kind of showing a curve to our residuals. Um, and then we're seeing a lot of uh, discretization in our scale location, as well as a tendency, and this is very common with the Poisson, uh, the tendency for the variance to increase as the mean increases. And that, in fact, uh, you'll note the Poisson doesn't have a standard deviation parameter, uh, that the variance of the Poisson goes up with the mean naturally. So if we look at the figure, uh, come back here, you'll also note, yeah, when, when x is large, the variance is higher. Uh, when x is small, the variance is lower. And so that what we're seeing in the scale location 
this very linear trend in the standardized residuals is a clear indication of heteroscedasticity. As, as the mean increases, the variance increases. So how do we fit a Poisson regression? So let's dive in. So we're gonna use the GLM function again. Uh, again, it's just y tilde x for our formula. And again, you can use more complicated formulas. Uh, for our family, we're gonna use Poisson for a Poisson distribution. And we're gonna use uh, link equals log for a log link. Uh, we can then, to see how we did, we can um, use the predict function. So we put our LM object, GLM object into there. We put our sequence of X values we want to make predictions in there. And again, it comes back with our predicted values. Uh, it's coming back, since we use a log link, it's coming back on a log scale. So we need to now exponentiate that to convert it from a log scale back to the linear scale. So we're noting that when we use GLM and we use a link function that when we make predictions, they come back on the scale of that link and we need to deal with that manually. So here we're showing our best fit line in uh, a red dashed line and the golden line here is now showing the actual distribution that was used to generate that data. So that, again, this was simulated data, so there was a truth and we actually did pretty close to it. And like what we saw uh, with the Poisson is that we don't have a, a, a CI and PI function by default here. Diving into its summary is very similar to what we saw in the Logit in that we're getting our, our residuals back in terms of their deviant scores. Uh, we're getting our estimates and our standard errors with a z-score, again, highly significant. Uh, we're getting this uh, deviance based table of null and residual deviance, and we're getting an AIC score. And again, AIC scores are rarely useful by themselves, but are very useful for model selection between models. Uh, we can now look at uh, uh, the, the sum, we, we can use the plot function to look at the error in the Poisson model. Um, so here is uh, our residuals, uh, you know, showing that there's no real trend in our residuals. Uh, our normal QQ doesn't really make sense. We've already violated it. The scale location looks better because we've now expressed that in terms of a standardized way that accounts for uh, the expected variance of the Poisson. And we can see that the, it's much more constant now. And that's that kind of takes us through uh, the Poisson. So you know, quickly, uh, at this point, jump over. Actually, I'm just going to stop here and move this last bit to another video.